Welcome back to round one of the Just Car Insurance Australian Drifting Grand Prix. A new season brings a range of new machines, so before we head into the top 16 battles, let's check out some of the new cars in the field. This is actually our first full series of ADGP. We went down to Calder Park this year and blew up our old um, Toyota Sora. We've now built the, this S15 that we're going to run for the rest of this series. We're running the LS3 um, standard gearbox with the R32 GDR rear end in it, just the bigger drive shafts and axles. We're making 440 horsepower. Uh, this year we're running a to totally new car. We're running a S15 with a 2JZ. Uh, the engine's been built by CND Motorworks, so all the custom fa fabrication from front to rear has been done by um, TrackArt. Brian Crowler supplied all the stroker kit and all the internals. We changed it because um, the old car was getting a bit tired, not enough power. So we thought we'd start fresh and from the ground up and build something special. The power that this car is making for this weekend is about um, 450 kilowatts. Um, we thought we'd keep like that since my first time driving the car, but when we come up to Barber Gala, should be pushing a bit more. Uh, yeah, I'm driving the S14 this time. Uh, it's been a fair while getting it built, just got it ready. Haven't had much test time in it, but it's got a fair few goodies in it. It's um, all ready to go, so I'm out in about 10 minutes time and we'll see how she goes. Uh, this is a totally different car compared from last year and last season. New cage, new shell, paintwork and bodywork all done by Beverly Collision. So it's got new rewire, ECU, um, the drivetrain and suspension is all pretty much the same from the last car as well. We've also uh, put a cooling system and, and fuel system all in the boot and uh, tried to make a few little changes here just to make it a bit more competitive and reliable as well. This is really the first time I've actually driven the car, so today the shake down. Um, so far it seems to be working pretty well, so it needs a few little tweaks here and there, but I think with a bit of a bit more track time should be a good thing. Okay, here is your High Tech Oil's top 16 battle tree for round one. Our first pairing, Rob White, reigning 2012 champion up against the godfather of drift, Danny. Denzo Verhumis. He's in a brand new car for this year. Rob White's in his backup car that's been modified to be more competitive. Let's see how it goes this time. He is the number one qualifier. Throws it in. Another textbook run so far. Perfect on that outer clipping zone. Denzo on the switch. Can't hold on to it and spins it around. He throws it away and hands a massive advantage to Rob White. That's not what the Godfather would have wanted in his first time in this car. A 10 0 advantage to Rob White. He doesn't need to do much, he just needs to keep up clean. But he's still going to push hard and give the crowd a battle they can watch. Rob White cut through that corner a little bit, following Denzo through. Good proximity on the last corner now. They come past the I Love Drift finish line. And if we go to the Achilles radial replay, we have to see where Denzo simply threw it all away. You know, with him having obviously a big error on the first one, it made it pretty straightforward. I thought we were going to get through, so we did, and straight to top eight. Cool, we can't wait. Our next pairing, Nick Coulson and Kelly Wong. She's our only female competitor in the Just Car Insurance Australian Drifting Grand Prix and getting better every single time she comes out. She's certainly one that you have to keep your eye on. If you slip up, she'll get you. Nick Coulson leading, throws it in. And that X-Force Achilles radial there. You have so much speed in that car. Kelly Wong is doing everything she can to try and keep up. A little bit of a straight and a correction there from Kelly as she comes to that last corner. And Nick Coulson simply able to walk away, which will give him the advantage going into the second run. Kelly Wong's going to have to push as hard as she can. She's got nothing to lose. And that's what she's doing, throws it in big, but Nick Coulson is able to answer the call. He's right there, showing us exactly how to battle. Good proximity coming into this last corner. Kelly Wong, a perfect lead run, but Nick Coulson is just able to follow better. As you can see on the replay, Nick Coulson just walking away from Kelly Wong, and that will give him the win. I think when I was following, I just uh, I had that little bit more proximity and I, I was on her a little bit more. Next pairing, Dale Campaign and Agus Andreas Paraskevis. Dale Campaign made the podium at this track last year, but Agus is on a mission this time around. He's been pushing very hard, very aggressive on the chase. Will he do the same this time? Campaign is the higher qualifier. Pedal to the metal, throws it in. 
Agus pushes in. There could be a little bit of contact there. Agus goes a little bit wild. Campaign continues the drift, but watch this. He straightens up and stops the drift. Is it a car issue or something else? Agus continues the drift through the course. Campaign got hit, was able to continue that drift and then lost it on the next corner, which means the advantage goes to Agus on the second run. Agus throws it in, campaign doing everything he can to keep up, but with a 10-0 advantage to Agus after that massive straight and loss of drift by campaign, he needs to hope for a miracle. It's not happening so far. Agus sails through. Have a look on the replay here. You can see Agus dives in, little bit of contact, but campaign continues his drift and then loses it on the next corner on that transition. And that gives the win straight over to Agus. Wow, what a battle that was. Uh, up against Dale there. We uh, put it put it door to door. We uh, touch panels. And that's about it, really. Just uh, going hard and uh, can't wait for the top eight. Bring it on. Ben Pertel now up against Simon Michaelmore. These guys have battled many times before. And have two drivers that are very capable indeed here in the Just Car Insurance Australian Drifting Grand Prix. S14, 180SX. RB25 under the hood of Michael Moore's car with a 2J for Ben Pertel, giving the car lots of power and lots of speed. You can see Pertel there able to get a bit of a gap, but Michael Moore dives in a lot less angle there and a bit of a correction coming into the last corner and not able to get that proximity going past the I Love Drift finish line. That gives the advantage to Ben Pertel in the GT Garage Achilles 180SX. Michael Moore leads now, throws it in big. Pertel is able to answer the call. Michael Moore goes shallow there, doesn't go out to that outer clip far enough, although Pertel did. Now continuing that last corner. Let's go to the Achilles radial replay now. You can see here Michael Moore leads, he throws it in, he's on that first outer clip, but takes a shallow line to the high tech oil centre section, while Pertel goes where he needs to and gets the win. He's such an awesome driver, I have full faith in what he does, and the car's just running awesome. Uh, so much power um, and so much grip, um, yeah, this is awesome. Two South Australians going head to head now, Anthony Cece and Elliot Wiley. These guys had to go a rerun, and if you check out what happened on the replay, Cece on his chase threw it in big, spun it around and got a zero. But then when Wiley chased, he got three wheels off the track, scoring him a zero. So the guys would have to go a rerun to settle this battle. Here it is. Elliot Wiley will lead as the higher qualifier. Cece having big drama for the blown engine, getting replaced overnight. Wiley throws it in big, lots of speed on that car. CC not able to keep up in the first section of the track. Now on that transition to the last corner, still not able to gain the ground. That Laurel has massive speed. That will give Wiley an advantage going into the second run. He just needs to hold it together this time, last time. He had a big advantage and went off track. This time he has a smaller advantage, but still enough. Throws it in, takes a shallow line for the third part of the course and does it again. Goes off the edge of the track, very messy. It means he gets good proximity on the last corner by cutting in. But I think the judges are going to see that very messy part of the track on this Achilles radial replay. You can see there going right over that corner. Very bad line. Oh, stoked. It was a bloody close call. Um, Elliot's a great driver and it was good to battle with him. Josh Botcher and Jack Wittes now. Botcher, a regular competitor overseas in Formula Drift Asia. This is actually his backup car. So similar situation to Rob White, giving his backup car a few upgrades while the other car is still overseas. He leads on the first run, pedal to the metal the whole way, throws it in big. Jack Wittes, though, is right there in that R31, doing everything he can to keep up. Now on the transition to the last corner, a great lead run from Josh Botcher and a good chase by Jack Wittes. The judges not really calling an advantage either way on that run. Let's see what happens now as they switch it around. Wittes gave a pretty good chase run. Josh Botcher is going to have to do it even better if he wants the win. So far, he's able to do so. Better proximity than Wittes for the first section. Now he pushes up on his door in that last corner. Great proximity from Botcher. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how a battle is won. No big advantage on the first one, but Josh Botcher just simply did a better chase, and that will hand him the win to go through to the top eight. Thanks, mate. Feel great. Yeah, we, um, Jack, he does a really good job. He's a young fella. He's learning a lot, and he's a uh, good driver, and it really put it on me on, the, on, the, on my lead run, and I just put it as close as I could. I, my mirror was bent in when I came back in, so I obviously got pretty close, but yeah, it was, good. It was a good run. Good drivers, yeah, great to get the win. 
New South Wales versus Queensland here, State of Origin. James Abbott, three fingers neat, Newell on S15, up against Michael Rosenblatt in the Commodore Wreckers R32. Obviously, he has an LS V8 under the hood. 2JZ power for Jabbott. Jabbott leads on the first run. He got a buy in the top 32 after his opponent pulled out, but a great lead from Jabbott so far. Throws it in, good entry. Rosenblatt on a good chase. But a bit of a correction there from Jabbott. A big understeer coming to that last corner. It was a great run from both drivers up until that point, but that big understeer means that Michael Rosenblatt will have the advantage coming into the second run. Rosenblatt throws it in full speed the whole way down. Jabbott's on a good chase so far, but he's going to need to do a lot better than that if he wants to turn that advantage around. Gets closer on the switch, but another big understeer moment for Jabbott coming into that last corner. Not sure if it's a car issue, but that will hand the win over to Rosenblatt. You can check that out here. A big, big correction. Almost completely lost drift there, Jabbott, but a big straighten. Does it again on his chase, and a convincing win for Rosenblatt. Uh, I'm feeling pumped. Um, I love Jabbott, he's a great guy. Uh, shame to knock him out, but the, uh, the V832 Commodore Skyline's just running really hot today, so can't be happier. Our last battle in the top 16 now, Scott Shembury, the ladies' man in the Three Fingers Neat Newlon 180SX, going up against one of his own friends, Michael Prosnick in the Supreme Caravan S13. Prosnick leads, V8 powered S13, pedal to the metal the whole way, throws it in. A little bit of a bobble on that entry. The Chembry there, a big straighten coming through the high-tech oil centre section. And another correction there as he tries to get up on the door of Prosnick. So a very messy chase from Scott Chembry in the Three Fingers Neat Blaze Unit 180SX. That'll give Michael Prosnick the advantage in the S13. Chembry is going to need to give it everything he's got. He wants to try and turn this one around. Great entry from Chembry. Throws it in big little correction though as he comes into the first corner. Very fast on the switch, but he spins it around. Shembry throws it away, and that will be an easy and convincing win for Michael Prosnick. We'll check out the replay here. A straighten through the high-tech oil centre section from Shembry gave the advantage to Prosnick. But this spin, that was the nail in the coffin. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked. That was good. Um, it's a shame one of my good mates, so that's how it is, yeah? Now we'll go out and give our best. Just Car Insurance was involved right from the get-go with the Australian Drifting Grand Prix. We believe it is a growing sport in Australia and there is a, a massive amount of people that are actually flocking towards this sport. And it's actually something that's quite interesting to watch. We support it because we know that our customers are into this kind of stuff and what better to actually be at the heart of it and support it nationally. We are also involved on a smaller scale with the figure eight drifting and with Big Drift. Personally, I've attended every single Just Car Insurance Australian Drifting Grand Prix. Who do I think's gonna win the 13-14 series? Well, I know Rob White would like to go back to back. Nick Coulson's a very big contender as well, but I'd like to see my insane drifter boys up there on the podium with some trophies as well. I like Agus, he's a bit out there, and if you actually don't Agus yourself, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. He's definitely an entertainer. At Just Car Insurance, we insure drivers in high performance, modified and imported cars. Yeah, we insure drifters, not on the track of course, but if you're into this type of driving this type of car, you talk to us about insurance and we can help you out. Well, here is your High Tech Oil's top eight battle tree. Things are getting even more serious now. Rob White and Nick Coulson are going to face off again. These guys seem to do battle at almost every single event, both from Queensland, both very serious competitors and very capable. Rob White has more wins against Nick than vice versa. Can Nick turn it around on this run? Rob White leads as the high qualifier. Barrels down, throws it in. Another great run from Rob White on his lead. Hits all the outer cliffs. But Nick Coulson putting on a great chase so far. But will it be enough? Judges not giving any real major advantage to either driver after that first one. So let's see what happens now with Nick leading. Throws it in. Great entry from the X-Force Achilles via Ute. Rob White cuts off the edge of the track there. A bit of a mistake from Rob White and a couple of little corrections on the chase there. 
Will that off-track excursion, will that be enough? He cut the corner, which let him get closer proximity. However, judges have said if they cut the corner, they will be penalised. You can see on the Achilles radial replay here, not a bad chase from Coulson, but not enough. But you can see Rob White, two wheels off track, and that mistake is enough to hand the win to Nick Coulson. It's good to have a, a win against Rob. Um, he did well. Um, my diff's on its way out, so we'll see how we go for the rest of the day. Agus now going up against Ben Pertel, both 180SXs. However, Agus still sticking with the SR24 cylinder. He loves it. It's a fresh engine for this round. Seems to be working so far. Agus has been very aggressive on his chase runs. Let's see what happens this time. Patel, a very high speed big entry. Agus doing everything he can to keep up. A good chase so far. Good line from both drivers. Agus very aggressive coming to this last corner to get good proximity. And that is what the judges want to see, ladies and gentlemen. Agus pushing right up on the door of Ben Pertel. That's going to give him a slight advantage coming into this run. Can Ben Pertel outdo Agus's chase this time? Agus throws it in full speed. Pertel's right there so far. Goes a little bit shallow on the line on that first outer clipping zone. Transitions back and not able to get up on the door of Agus as much to begin with. Getting closer towards the end of the run. But will it be enough? Have a look at the replay here. You can see that Ben Patel went off track ever so slightly and had a very shallow line coming to that corner. But have a look on the other run. You can see that Agus was able to get right up on the door of Ben Patel, pushing very hard, very aggressive on his chase. And it's that chase run from Agus that is going to earn him the win and go through to the top four. Yeah, top four, here we come. Yeah, pretty stoked. Uh, that was a good run against Ben. It was uh, door to door and uh, bring on top four. The other side of the battle tree now, Anthony Cece up against Josh Botcher. Anthony Cece, a local driver, however, our revised track layout at ADGP means no real home track advantage. Josh Botcher as the higher qualifier leads, full throttle the whole way, throws it in, big speed in that tyre right GT Radio 180 SX. A big straighten there though from Anthony Cece into that first high tech oils out of clipping zone. He's able to get better proximity on the last part of the track at that big straighten. Will have him heavily penalised, which means the advantage is going to go to Josh Botcher. Let's see what happens on the second run now. Anthony CC will lead. He needs to give it everything he's got. Hope for a mistake from Botcher. So far, no mistake from Botcher. He goes a little bit shallow on the line there, but he's keeping it clean. Transitions into that last corner. And he's able to keep a nice, tidy run behind Anthony CC which will hand him the win. Go to the Achilles radial replay now, and you can just see very messy entry and a straight there from Anthony CC, and that is all it takes, ladies and gentlemen, to get the lose. Yeah, it feels great, mate. It was, um, it was a tough battle with CC, and I was really close, so I'm um, glad I got the win. I'm just trying to drive as tight as I can and, and really use these SX2s as best as we can. There's a lot of Achilles drivers out there, so we're out there to um, take them all down. Um, just got to deal with the flies too. Michael Rosenblatt up against Michael Prosnick. Battle of the V8s now. These guys had to go at two more times. Check out the Achilles radial replay. You can see these guys. Not only did they do the same good things, they made the same mistakes on each run. The judges couldn't split them the first time around. They went for one more time and the judges still couldn't split them. So now let's go into their second rerun. Michael Prosnick leads as the higher qualifier. Rosenblatt takes chase. Both V8 powered Nissans. Prosnick throws it in, another great entry. Rosenblatt is right there, right up onto the back of Mock. But a big straighten there from Rosenblatt as they transition to that last corner. And another correction as he tries to take chase and can't keep up on this one. Those two mistakes are going to give an advantage to Michael Prosnick now. Can Rosenblatt pull something out of the hat to try and take back a win on this run? A very big high-speed entry from Rosenblatt, giving everything he's got. But Michael Prosnick is able to answer the call. Nearly overcooks it before that transition, but able to gather himself back up and keeps it clean for the rest of the run. Let's go to the Achilles radial replay. And you can see here a bit messy on the entry and a big correction and a big straighten there from Rosenblatt. He is one quick dude. He, um, I guess, LS, LS, same tyres. Uh, it was, wasn't easy, I'll tell you. Stick around because after the break we head into the top four and the finals to see who are the winners at round one of the Just Car Insurance Australian Drifting Grand Prix at Malala Motorsport Park.